Hoffman, citizen member. Janet Tillman with City Development. Mike Vanderstein, Mayor and Chairman. Chad Pelichek, Planning Director. Steve Soklowski from the Planning Department. Marilyn Montemayor, citizen member. Uh, Ryan Sazma, Department of Public Works. Thank you very much. Uh, does anybody have a potential conflict of interest with any of the items on the agenda? Seeing none, then we'll go on. Um, next item is approval of the minutes from the Planning Commission meeting on February 25th. So moved. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Next is items for discussion and possible mm -hmm. action. Item 3.1 is a conditional use and variance application. I think we have an echo in here. I think we have an echo in here. <laughs> did, it, did it do that when I went to send my talk Yes. Um, oh, that's better. Uh, we have a variance application by Sheboygan Leadership to install new electronic reader board monument sign at 30, uh, 1305 St. Clair Avenue. Steve. All right, thanks, Mayor. Um, Principal Laura Studi is here from Sheboygan Leadership, as well as Representative uh, Mark Hickman from Sheboygan Leadership. What we're taking a look is the school would like to install a new electronic reader board monument sign. Um, they're taking a look at, um, taking, sorry, we're done. We're done. <laughs> um, they're looking at the uh, north east, or I'm sorry, northwest inner, or corner of their property, which is the um, intersection of 14th and St. Clair. The monument sign proposes about 36 square feet. It'll be about six and a half feet tall. And the electronic reader board will provide opportunities to advertise activities, events to the public, um, make it safer for employees who can easily just change the messages from the office. It would increase the school's visibility, um, promote it, sharing of the school's virtues, and may help increase enrollment and would continue to improve the look of their neighborhood. <laughs> Sheboygan leadership has been at the site since 2012, and they've made some improvements to uh, their grounds, their facilities. They've bought in other properties in the area and created some uh, um, uh, playground space. So there's been a, a significant amount of improvements that they've done over the years uh, to enhance the school. Um, and this is the last thing that they would, or one of the, uh, the newest things they would like to do is to request a variance to have the sign five feet from the property line. And there's a couple of reasons for that um, that include in, in the future, they would like to potentially create a, bu a bus drop off at that uh, section of the property. And if the sign was in the 12 foot requirement, that would impact the location of the driveways and everything wouldn't fit real well. Um, and also they wanna have the opportunity to really have the sign out at 14th and advertise to that traffic going north and south over there. Um, applicant would be removing a little bit of fencing and some trees in that area. And so the plan commission may want to have the applicant just kind of explain how much they're removing. But staff is recommending approval of the sign as uh, presented. And the applicants are here. Thank you very much for that report. Would the applicant like to uh, make any comments? Please step to the podium. <clears throat> Welcome. Hi, everybody. Thanks. Um, so Steve did a fantastic job explaining what we've done so far to improve our property and what we hope to continue to do. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I think you just about covered it. Um, it wouldn't be a very tall sign. We're hoping something that looks nice and improves the neighborhood um, and advertises our school as well. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? Any motions? Move to approve subject to staff recommendations. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. 
Uh, we have a motion on the floor. One last call for discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Good luck with your project. Right. Thank you. Right. Yep, bye-bye now. Item 3.2 is a conditional use application by Chris to operate Blessed Child Daycare at 1125 Michigan Avenue. Steve, have a report on this? Yeah, uh, Carissa Scott is here with uh, several uh, people that are here to represent her as well as the property owner, um, Armando Ochoa. And what we're taking a look at is uh, 1125 Michigan Avenue. Um, some of you might be familiar with this property. Um, Armando had operated Dos Hermanos for many years. How many? Any idea? Any idea how long you had been operating? 10 years. Um, so recently, the grocery store had pulled out of the space, and now Miss Scott is here, and she wants to operate uh, a daycare called Blessed Child Daycare from the facility. Um, the location they, uh, in, is indicated that it's uh, a, a good location as far as surrounded by uh, businesses and family households, as close to downtown and public transportation, and the plant. Uh, the tenant space has plenty of room for children to play, learn, and grow. They would include daily learning activities for the children and care. Um, they would engage in community service, helping others such as collecting food for the hungry, making art projects for the elder, elderly. Um, they would have different themes throughout the week, um, such as Animal Week, where children will learn about different animals, their habitats, by watching movies and reading. And at the end of the week, they would uh, review all they were, had learned. Um, the space is about 2,000 square feet, and the uh, child care center would operate for children uh, uh, six weeks to 12 years old. Um, they were, there would be interior improvements uh, that would uh, to to the space that would include painting. They would add uh, shelves for toys and books, tables for the different activities. Um, in the evening, there is a second floor to this, and in the evening, they would have uh, quieter activities, um, movies, puzzles, different things uh, uh, to take uh, to do while the neighbors were home upstairs. Out Door activities would take place in a local park around the stat area, and there would be uh, three people operating the uh, daycare. Typical hours would be 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., Monday through fi Friday, and Blessed Child would be licensed to care for eight children. Um, the, uh, like I said, Dos Hermanos had operated there for many years, and the space has been um, vacant for a little bit of time, and this would allow um, uh, Carissa the opportunity to uh, opportunity operate her to, daycare uh, operate and her fill daycare. that tenant space. So staff is recommending approval. Thank you for that report, Steve. Would uh, the uh, applicants like to make any further comments? Please step to the podium. <laughs> Good. Just pull the mic down a little. Okay. Thank you. Huh. Welcome. Thank, thank you. Um, yeah, um, so I have it in my house at the time, um, and it's licensed, but it's kind of a small space. Um, so I'm looking to grow it a little bit. Um, more room for the children. Um, my yard space is okay. It's pretty big, but like I said, um, in the house, it's just limited to, like, with furniture and stuff, and then also the toys are overtaking the whole house. So I'm looking to um, expand it, and it's a need for it in the community. So, All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any questions? Go ahead, David. Yeah, I'm just curious, well, which park are you going to utilize for the outdoor activities? So um, when the licensing comes, I'm going to um, get an okay to go to the local park. Um, I have to have a buggy big enough for uh, the children under two, so I'll have at least four of them. So I got the four, the quad uh, stroller. So we can go to like, we can go to the park that's, the school park that's, oh. the, the school that just left, they, they locally located right there. We can go there okay. or we can go a little further with just like walking. Yeah. Okay. Thank and I you. have a, I have a, um, a staff member to help me, her name Connie. So, thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as far as uh, 
how you get your funding for the children that, that attend your daycare. Uh, are these going to be children that the parents are going to all be able to afford to pay for it themselves, or are you going to get some assistance from the, from the county and, and parents that don't have the money for the daycare? How will that work? Um, yes, um, sir, yes. I'm already licensed through the state, so I do take um, the government assistance, some, um, some families that can't afford it, so the government pays like a share of it. So I'm already in process. I'm already. I already have that in place. I'm just looking to move the location, which um, I'm looking for the city of Sheboygan to okay it. Um, then the licensing people um, will come in and continue with the, you know, the state regulation stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Seeing no other discussion, I'd entertain a motion. A second. Thank you for that motion and support. We have one uh, person in the crowd who would like to speak. Please come to the microphone. Hi. <clears throat> Hello, Bart. I'm uh, Kevin Hoffman. I run Hoffman's Flower Land across the street. And my only concern would be the safety of the children, because ever since 2005, where they remodeled Michigan Avenue, it's, it's a very fast street. And it's, you know, the safety of children would be my concern and parking. I mean, I don't know how many clients you have. So I would think that the safety and the parking should be an issue that somebody should discuss. Yeah. Thank you for those questions, Kevin. If you'd like to respond, please step back to the podium. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm going to have eight siblings so that will lessen up the parking space, maybe about four cars here coming and going. But as far as safety, um, that's maintained with my license. I have to make sure all the kids are safe and secure. Um, I watch them uh, pretty well. Um, I got an assistant to help me. So when we go out, I'll make sure that we all have them together. We put them in the buggies um, and the ones that can walk, we'll have them in in order, they're pretty obedient. The kids I have, I'm thankful. I'm pretty blessed, like blessed child. But yeah, they're pretty obedient, and usually, they they follow the rules, even the little ones when you train them up. So, thank you very much, uh, Marilyn Montemayor. Uh, thank you. If it's eight <clears throat> children, that should work out nicely in that large space with three adults. That seems like a good ratio. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I thought so too. Okay. Uh, older person born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, regarding the parking, maybe staff uh, could help me. On that side of Michigan Avenue in the 1100 block, if somebody uh, parks out there, is that one hour or two hour parking? And then my second question would be, uh, if it would help her with her business, would it be possible to limit a couple stalls to 15 or 20 minutes or loading zone, something like that, to, you know, to keep the traffic flow going and accommodate our facility? What's that one? I'll, I, th I think that's a good uh, suggestion, Alderman Bourne. I think what we're going to do is wait to see if that becomes a concern, um, and then we can address that later on and get, give her some additional 15-minute parking if, it, if it's needed. But let's see how it works for drop-off and pick-up first, and, and then we can address it. There, I believe it's metered. Is it metered at that location? Then it's then it's probably our parking. Our parking. Thank you. Is it Kevin? Uh, Steve. Kevin would know. And then, um, from a technical standpoint, you know, in that central commercial zone, the parking requirements are waived. So just like all the other business, I believe Hoffman might have some extra parking, but a lot of the taverns, restaurants, things like that around there don't have any parking, and it's all street parking. So this fits uh, the rest of the uses along that area. Okay, thank you for that discussion. Do we have a motion on the floor? I think so, yes. yes okay, we have a motion on the floor. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Good luck with your project. 
The next item is item uh, 3.3, which is a conditional use and variance application by the Humane Society of Sheboygan County to utilize space in a multi-tenant facility for kenneling an indoor dog park at uh, 3115 North 21st Street. Steve? All right. Um, Steve Schmidt is here representing the Humane Society and... <coughs> Hello. Um, what we're taking a look is the former Nemshoff facility, which was purchased by the Humane Society about 2016. Um, at that time, they had come in and received approval from the Plan Commission for a multi-tenant facility, and some of the other tenants in that um, uh, facility right now include ePower, Sheboygan County Food Bank, and Making Spirits Bright. Uh, there's a large tenant space that's still available in that space so the Humane Society would like the opportunity to move in there and um, it would be used for 11 dog kennels of various sizes and 16 cat kennels in a separate room. Uh, the kennels would will be used primarily for dogs being transferred in from high kill shelters. Um, the dogs need to be quarantined before they can be brought into the main shelter to help reduce the spread of contagious diseases. And the facility will be used as a ringworm quarantine area for both dogs and cats. The kennels are also used by the county sheriff's department and local police for criminal investigation seizures, which include species varying from dogs, cats, birds, goats, pigs. Um, the site was selected because there is, uh, it's important to have that separate quarantine area uh, and, and uh, the space is available. Uh, the, um, there would also be eight outdoor kennels eight on outdoor the north side of the building, the presently in the parking lot that's on the north side of the building. Um, those kennels would be uh, approximately six feet wide by 14 feet long enclosed by a six foot uh, cyclone fence with a uh, fabric screening. And the outdoor kennels would only be used during the business hours from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, the kennels will remove approximately about seven parking spaces on the north side of the site. The Humane Society is also uh, proposing to create an indoor dog park in the facility. It's large enough that there's space available that um, uh, uh, it could be offered to the public for people during inclement weather or just weather in general to use it as the dog park facility. The citizens would be required to provide proof of a, a current rabies vaccination, and then they would be able to pay a membership fee and proof of the current uh, rabies vaccination directly at the Sheboygan County Humane Society facility during regular business hours. They would receive uh, an individual code, and it would be kind of like a gym, like anytime fitness or what have you, that you would have the opportunity to utilize the um, dog park 24 hours a day and there would be security cameras out there at the site. Um, other than that, uh, again, uh, the, there's going to be a few kennels on the north side of the site, but as many recall, when we approved the Sheboygan County Humane Society, their other building, there's a significant amount of parking that is going to be constructed on that site, so they're kind of sharing parking in that area as well. But other than that, staff was recommending approval of the request, and the applicants are here. Thank you very much, Steve. Would you like to add anything to that report? You did a very good job, Steve, and your, your dog is at the shelter for tomorrow pickups. All right. <laughs> Good. <coughs> no, I think I think you've Your answered everything. It's just um, we have uh, about a twelve thousand square foot section, and then the, what used to be the paint uh, shed area uh, for uh, uh, Nemshoff is utilizing is being used for our kennel area because we do get a number of dogs. If you the kinship kennel case where we was thirty six dogs that came in, we had another one with the county that we had over a hundred animals that came in, and then we have to be able to disperse that. We're going to be building a new shelter, but we still are looking for this to be able to, to take care of that. And then also for our indoor walking, because you see people, we, our volunteers that come in and walk dogs during the winter months, it gets pretty treacherous out there. And, you know, so we wanted to have an indoor type of walking area for that. So, so any yeah. other questions? Committee, any other questions? Oh, thank you very much, Steve. I'm, I guess at this uh, time we'd entertain a motion. So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Very good. We uh, under discussion then. Any other discussion? With that, all, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Good luck with the project. Thank you very much.
Item um, 3.4 is a conditional use and variance application by Ron Becker to construct a new multi-storage building at the existing Transpo mini storage facility located at 3515 Superior Avenue. Steve? All right. Um, this might look familiar to some already from the standpoint that this is off of Superior Avenue. The plan commission had looked at this in July of 18. Uh, the previous conditional use permit had expired, so um, uh, the backers are back here looking to uh, get what was approved previously. Um, basically, what it, there's uh, four buildings on the site right now. They're looking to add a fifth one on the north side of the site that would include about <coughs> 14 mini storage units. Um, so there would be a total of 164 uh, units on the site. So um, if you want, I can get into more detail if anyone has any specific questions, but this is basically the same uh, uh, request that was made in the past. Um, and I could answer any questions or uh, address anything that the plan commission might want me to touch on. And the applicants are here, but staff is recommending approval again. Thank you, Mr. Becker, Mr. Schmidt, anything you'd like to add? Okay. All right. Commissioners, any questions? All the person born? I make a motion to approve subject to conditions. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any other discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, then we'll go on to um, item 3.5, which is a conditional use and variance application by Ron Becker to construct a new mini storage buildings at the existing Transpo mini storage facility located at 1210 South 10th Street. Steve. All right. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so John and Ron Becker are here. Steve Pesky from Distinctive Design, Brian Wells from Miller Engineers, and Steve Schmidt from Schmidt Construction for this particular project. And there are some neighbor here, neighbors here for this project as well. So what we're taking a look is at um, 1210 South 10th Street. Um, the Beckers presently own the property at 1209 South 11th Street, and that's the present office facility for Transpo, and that is uh, the building that you see kind of on the left-hand side of the screen that's kind of whited out. Um, that facility presently has 69 units inside of it. The 1210 property, which is the property that you see with the site plan on the east side, closest to 10th Street, is currently used as a facility that is used by ABF Trucking as a distribution center. Um, the idea is to demolish what's there and then to construct uh, a total of 93 units, uh, kind of uh, in a, a U-shape that would go along Kentucky, uh, east and west and then south and uh, north and south along 10th Street and then east and west against the alley. So there's a total of 93 units. Um, uh, building one is the U-shaped uh, one along the street frontages. That building's 20 feet wide by 210 feet and 230 feet. You can see that the building along Kentucky is a little bit longer then along the south side, so uh, 210 and 230. Uh, the units would vary from 100, uh, uh, 100 square feet, 200 square feet, and, and at the corners, two of them that are 400 square feet. The section along 10th Street is approximately <coughs> uh, 10 by 100 feet long. Building two is the <coughs> interior building, and that building is approximately 45 feet wide by 170 feet deep and that includes 41 storage units. The facility would be open 24 hours, seven days a week, and access to the site will be provided from Kentucky Avenue and is controlled by an electronically operated access gate. So there wouldn't really be any car access from any the alley or 10th Street. It would all be coming from the Kentucky Avenue uh, improvement that you see on the site plan. Uh, couple of comments just with regards to staff. Staff biggest concern has to do with the design of the proposed mini storage buildings. Um, the applicant is uh, requesting some fairly significant variances. Um, the building along Kentucky Avenue is proposed to be seven feet from the north property line. 
the building along 10th Street is uh, proposed to be four feet from the property line and the building along the alley is proposed to be 3.5 feet. So the minimum setback in the urban industrial zone is 25 feet. So there's some fairly significant setbacks um, that are uh, being looked at. Um, the applicant will probably speak to you know, some of the surrounding neighborhood and setback issues with the residents and things like that that might be a little bit closer and the reason why they're proposing the setbacks as proposed. Um, Plan Commission you know, is aware that the city has been interested in improving the overall look and feel of the neighborhoods in this area. Basically, 8th Street to, North Fort, or to 14th Street from about Indiana Avenue to Georgia Avenue. The design of this mini storage facility will impact the overall feel and look of the neighborhood for decades to come. So it's imperative that if Transpo wants to obtain the variances, the project as presented, uh, the facility will be well designed because Transpo building is going to be seen every day from the neighboring properties. If well done, people will invest in the neighborhood as we hope. And if the building is average, you probably will get average investment around the facility. Um, with regards to building setbacks, the building is going to be very close to the lot lines, which leaves a limited opportunity for the installation of green space and landscaping. Oftentimes, the plan commission is approving projects with the understanding that a landscape plan will be reviewed and approved by staff. However, in this case, the applicant's requesting significant variances from the landscape requirements, and the plan commission may want to see exactly what the applicant is proposing in order to extend, uh, exactly understand what variances are being proposed. Um, staff has informed the applicant of the concerns and uh, design and landscaping concerns and the project that you have before you as a result of some of those discussions. Um, there will not be any direct access onto the 1210 property. The, uh, the, the property will be accessed through the 1209, the existing site. So the applicants will have to create uh, an access agreement between the two properties uh, prior to any type of building permit issuance. Um, applicant is also proposing to create uh, a new common property line. So they're kind of amending kind of the area along the driveway to the north. So that has to match up and they'll have to submit that. Um, plan commission may want to ask why they're not combining this all into one lot and they can talk about that. Um, there are several variances, like I said, seven feet to the north property line, Kentucky, four feet to the east property line, 10th Street, and three feet to the alley, um, requesting to create a parcel without any street access, but that, uh, obviously that access easement would take care of that. Requesting a paving setback of zero feet to the west property line, that's where the shared driveway is, and the easement would take care of that. And then uh, an ac uh, variance to the locational landscaping requirements. So the, one of the things that the zoning ordinance does state with any type of mini storage facility is the facility shall be designed so as, uh, so as to minimize adverse visual impacts on the nearby developments. Color, exterior materials, and orientation of the proposed buildings and structures shall complement the surrounding development. So the big question that I think the plan commission needs to address is um, Transpo's requesting significant building and landscape variances. And the question that needs to be addressed is if Transpo is proposing a development that is too dense for the site. Um, the Architectural Review Board did approve uh, uh, the drawings that you see. Um, uh, there are some modifications that will need to be addressed. Um, however, one of the things that staff does have some concerns with is the setbacks um, and whether or not the, the variance should be granted for the setbacks as requested or if the plan commission should consider 10 feet setbacks around the perimeter of the site. Um, it's, it's a very dense development. Uh, the applicant is proposing, you know, what they're after. I don't see any issues with asking for that. But at the same time, as a commission, we have to take a look at this and make sure that uh, the building, the site are constructed in such a way that it's minimizing the impact to the others, allowing them to function, but also providing a decent design for that neighborhood. So the staff does have concerns with the setbacks and, you know, uh, that's something that can be discussed, but, uh, you know, whether or not it needs to be 10 or more around here, but it, there should be something that allows for some landscaping to get in there besides the building design. So I can answer any questions. The applicants are here and there's neighbors here. Thank you, Steve. Um, Mr. Becker, Mr. Schmidt, anyone like to speak to these issues? Can we start first of all with the one parcel? Why, why it's, we're not combining the parcel or is that something that's in your plans? 
No. Ron, you can address that. It's for estate purposes, estate planning. So you'd rather keep it two parcels? Yes. Okay, very good. And that works with that um, easement and things like that. Okay. And then uh, the other uh, information was on the, the setbacks and uh, the landscaping. Okay. <laughs> Take it, Steve. Thank you. Uh, so regarding the setbacks, again, I know density, as Steve had uh, yeah. stated, is, is uh, bringing up question of, you know, amount versus uh, site limitations on this. Um, we are conforming, as Steve, Steve had uh, relayed, uh, to similar entities in the neighborhood. Uh, the alleyway, you know, we're uh, following the same as uh, same setback as what the current building or existing building is um, where Transpo is located right now. And along the street Janet, side... Can you go back one more panel? No, other way. That's good, that one. Down a little. One more. Very good. Please proceed. Okay. In regards to uh, Kentucky Avenue, uh, we are improving uh, some of the curb appeal and the amount of green space just due to the amount of curb cut that's currently uh, residing where ABF trucking is, is utilizing um, a very large amount uh, or a large curb cut to get in and out of that building. So adding more grass in green space between the sidewalk and the street side as well. Um, with the density, I mean, there is... Uh, there is a point of return that they need to have X amount of units to make this a viable project uh, within the space. Um, as far as the landscaping requirements, I know, Janet, you've been talking with uh, our landscape architect. I believe you met with him yesterday um, in regards to that. So. Landscape plan at 12. 44 over lunch hour, 12, 12 <laughs> something. I think it was 44, but sure. yes. So uh, we are in the, the works with that as well of trying to, to find a, a good solution to fit uh, the space and the requirements that we have. Uh, exterior from the architectural review board stance, we had met with them last night. Um, there were some comments uh, that we um, reviewed with them. And I know, Steve, I just actually, or Jason had sent you an email here just shortly ago with gotcha. some of the updated um, comments. But I can, do you mind if I just pass this around? No, just be fine. <clears throat> Sounds good. I'll just pass it this way, and if you guys need to take a look at this. Yep. The changes are along the, the north facade or Kentucky Avenue um, where we've elevated a, a center element uh, along the long facade and brought in another brick panel element into it uh, from some of the recommendations of the Architecture Review Board, um, specifically Dick Lindy <laughs> is the one who had that thought or comment to it. Thank uh, you for that information. Go oh, ahead. Also, one other element along the alleyway side uh, on that drawing, you will also see that um, incorporating other uh, differences of panel color uh, to break up the long elevation that I believe every uh, 20 feet or so that we would have a five, four or five foot section of, of uh, darker metal panel just to break up that long facade. All right, commissioners, any questions? Uh, first of all, Janet, did you have anything else? And Ryan? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I did express to Ryan here that um, I am a little concerned about how squished plants are, for lack of a better word, um, and also trying to plant trees within that, I think it's four and a half feet there. And along with all the shrubbery along the building. 
Um, I'm not sure that's going to work. And if the plantings do happen to die off, you'll be getting a letter from me stating that they need to be replanted. And you do need to make sure you um, meet all of your landscape point requirements. Oh, oh absolutely. We, yeah. uh, we had the same uh, landscape at our Wisconsin Avenue location that we ran all those uh, shrubs and everything around the outside. Mm -hmm. um, we ran yeah. uh, sprinklers for months. Well, we're big on, on appearance. Okay. So, yeah, absolutely. But I just wanted to let you know that I did express that concern about that, that that does need to be <coughs> looked at as well. So, and I know at your Wisconsin site, you did have a little bit more space to meet your landscape points versus having them all jammed around the building. So. A little bit more space, but the landscape area around the building that we put up there is about the same width as far as the actual shrubbery and greenery around that building. Um, and the other difference is, is that we had a, long, a deeper setback from the property line to that building, but the landscape area is about the same width. So, and we're definitely keeping, it up, <coughs> keeping everything in the green. So. Okay, I just wanted to let you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> okay, Ryan. Um, my question is, my feeling is we need to decrease the size of these variances. Um, what, what are some solutions that you could get to get some of this landscaping in? Because I don't know how you're going to get it in the way it is now. It's just, it's not going to work, which is, all, which is I think is why we haven't seen the plan yet. So I see you got one driveway 30 feet wide and the other one 25. Why, why is that? You're, you're asking about the driveway that are accessed off the alleyway? Right there, yeah. One's 30 and the other one's 25. How come? We have deeper units there. Okay. So that And the other units are 20 units, right. or 20, mm -hmm. so you could take those 25s, narrow those down to 20 possibly. I'm just thinking out loud, and that would gain you some of your more space on your variance. Therefore, you can narrow up the driveway then to 25 feet, because this is so tight with these variances, I don't know how you're going to meet the landscape requirements and actually have it look nice. So, are we needing <clears throat> You haven't submitted anything yet. Okay. Sir, could you step up to the microphone when you want oh, to speak? Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, well, I know you just you just received the the landscape plan today, um, so I guess it's hard to say. Obviously, we don't know if the landscape requirements have been met. Um, the reason for the twenty five feet is because with or thirty feet on the one drive side is because customers who are going to be renting a twenty five foot deep storage unit generally it's going to be maybe a trailer or something like that. So those units, in order for the customer to be able to maneuver to get a trailer into the doors and things like that without causing any possible damage or anything, we gave them that extra five foot width. Um, I believe that once the landscape plan is all finished and completed, I believe that with the space that's there um, being very similar to what we had, like I said, at our Wisconsin Avenue location, that the requirement will, would be able to be met. Um, not to mention the fact that adding all of that curb space and planting more trees on the Kentucky Avenue side um, mm -hmm. in between the sidewalk and the curb, uh, we'll be also adding, uh, I think it's about 100 feet of curb from that the ABF is currently using for backing trailers in and out of. Um, we're also going to be adding all that green space as well. So that'll definitely be a, an addition and a, an improvement for the whole area. So. Now, even even with that, I think it's going to be tough the way it is. Okay. So what, what what this is a possibility to make those twenty five foot units twenty. Therefore, the driveway goes down to twenty five, and you just gain ten feet. Well, it's it's possible, mm -hmm. but it's also less revenue. Right. So as far as we're looking at the cost of the project, the cost of demolition, um, all of that, we're obviously looking at getting enough revenue so that we can make the project viable as well. Right. So that extra with a 10 by 20 unit is a $94 rate. With a 10 by 25 unit, we're looking at a $120 rate. So uh, when we take away that many 10 by 25 units, that would take a lot of the financials out of the out of the equation. All right. That'd make it a little bit more tough, a little more difficult to be viable as far as financially is concerned. I mean, you know, landscaping is always important for any project, but mm -hmm. here specifically is you got houses on the north side, mm -hmm. across the street on the north side, and mm -hmm. uh, we owe it to them to make sure this thing is buffered and, and oh, looks absolutely. nice. Oh, so, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. I know that the um, for your point system that you don't in 
include from the sidewalk to the curb. Right. But we're proposing to line that with trees along yeah. there. Oh, required then. Okay, good. Uh, also on uh, 10th Street then too? Because of the high power lines? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we are buffering that to the north then too with that. So, And then they won't have truck lights flashing their homes everywhere. So, for another point, um, as, as far as the improvements... Um, not only will the neighbors be receiving an extra 100 feet of curb for parking because uh, on-street parking is, is very, very tight over there as it is. Uh, there'll be another 100 feet, not, to, not only that, the current tenants that are in that building now, all the truck drivers, um, the three other tenants that we have in that building, they will no longer be parking there as well, so customers are going to gain parking. Um, aside from that, we're also going to be taking away all of that truck traffic, all the dust, um, the, the painted block building that's there currently now and replacing it with what we believe is a very, very nice uh, looking building. So as far as aesthetics and as far as improving the neighborhood, I think that just a few of those points alone, um, you know, show the, the, the improvement that the project would do all, all overall. So. <clears throat> okay, under further discussion, Ryan? Yeah, also with uh, stormwater, mm -hmm. something as simple as downspouts for all these big roofs, where do you plan on discharging this? I guess I, so I, I, haven't, I haven't seen any of those details. I know a lot of times this stuff gets approved without this, but this yeah. is one of those situations I think we need to see it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. The, the U-shaped building around the outside, so building one, uh, the stormwater is actually going to be rolling off of the outside of the building. Um, the landscape plan will have uh, white stone uh, underneath the edge of the roof. Uh, that'll be catching the water. We'll basically be using that as irrigation for the trees and the, the plants and things that we have there. Uh, and then the center building, the stormwater is going to be going into a gutter, uh, which will be going underground and dispersing into the storm sewers uh, that uh, are being placed inside, as you see on the east side of the inside of the property, and connecting to the city storm sewer line. So that's where the, that's where the stormwater is going to be draining off to. Again, I'd feel more comfortable seeing that on paper someplace besides just... It's on, just it's, yeah, it's on the plan. Yeah, the, okay. the, gu the gutters are on the plan in the center building there. Okay. It's all right there. Yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, under further discussion, Dave Hoffman? Uh, I had my question answered. Thank you. Uh, Chad? So I just want to mention to the commission as you're thinking about whether this, you know, whether there should be a 10-foot setback or what they've proposed, a very similar situation we're dealing with today is the Save-A-Lot up on North A Street. That building, whenever it was constructed, was constructed roughly uh, three feet behind the back of curb on Zimble and uh, five to seven feet, if you will, on the A Street side. And you know how intrusive that building is when you drive down Zimble, the, the street to the south, and A Street, the street to the west. Um, we've just hired an architect to take a look at how to uh, change that facade a little bit to try to make it work into the neighborhood. Um, so I think there are some concerns from staff in the fact of, you know, looking at this building being very close to um, the back of sidewalk. I understand they're trying to do landscaping and those types of things as well, but uh, property owners across the way are going to be looking at this uh, improvement. And it's a, you know, the save a lot is a good um, a comparison to what that looks, what that size building looks like on, you know, right behind the back of the sidewalk. So just as a reference point, I just wanted to share that with you as you are you're deliberating on what we should do with this. Thank you. With that, I'd entertain any other questions or motions? Oh, yeah, uh, Steve? So, so I think, I think the big thing, it is when we're taking a look at it is is you know what that set setback should be i mean the the applicant if i'm the applicant i'm trying to jam as much stuff as i can in here from a profit perspective i get that but at the same time as a commission we also have to look at it functioning from a, a, a developer perspective yet also fitting in well with the neighborhood and from a staff perspective, I don't believe that the proposal you have before you does that. Um, I think it jams in and gets what the applicant wants, but I don't know that it necessarily provides additional green space or things like that. Um, there's no reason, and, and we've heard that there's an ability to design things 
um, to meet, say, for example, a 10 foot setback. It's just that they get more profit from the other way of doing it. So that's a decision that, you know, the plan commission has to be aware of is, yes, we understand that. Yet at the same time, this building is going to be here for 50, 60 years. And how does that impact the rest of the area? So I think, it, you know, from my perspective, I don't see why there couldn't be any time a person's asking for variances. The plan commission is always getting better design, better landscaping, better something in here. I just see, we're, yeah, we're meeting the points, we're putting it in, we're jamming it in in the space we have. I don't see anything that says, hey, based on you guys giving us this, we're doing this extra right here. So yes, there's been some improvements to the building. Those that last night were required by the architectural review board and they said those were the minimum that they would accept. So, so again, my feel on this is anytime we're asking for as significant of variances, there's usually a lot more from a design perspective, and I don't see that here, and I think it should be uh, done, and whether or not that 10-foot gives us additional buffer to add landscaping, maybe that's it, but there, the, there's things that can be done to improve the site. Thank you, Steve. I guess I'd entertain a motion. Uh, Jim? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you mentioned that by going to the, to the larger setbacks that you would be losing revenue. Uh, with the market, with the market right now for storage units, would it be possible for okay. you to raise your rate somewhat <clears throat> at that location and still remain competitive with your competitors? Um, uh, actually, we've already raised rates, um, quite honestly, twice this year, um, and and I'll admit the market is very good, which is why we're doing this. Um, in fact, in the city. Um, Dad, can you hand me that? One of, one of the reasons why we're doing this, and, the, and this is obvious the location that we are, is that right now, 45% of our current customers pick location as the reason why they rent with us. And 78.23% of all of our customers come from the 53081 area code. Um, so location is the big part with all the apartments and things going up. But we, we've already addressed that. We have already raised rates. Um, and you know, storage, obviously, is still doing very well. Um, but you know, obviously, as far as raising rates go, I don't think it would be a good idea to do that again in a, from in a, a marketing in, standpoint. Thank you. In a few mm -hmm. months, you're going to have a slug more a slug of more prospects when that when that new apartment building goes up down there on uh, off of Indiana Avenue in the mm -hmm. old, old industrial area. Uh, yes, but uh, uh, the way it stands right now, if you would, uh, you did some math earlier. If you would go to the bigger setback and the smaller units, how much revenue would you be lo losing a month the way you have it priced right now? Boy, I quite honestly do not have that. Um, well, just you know, we also you also had had approved uh, the 14th and uh, Indiana Avenue facility, or not Indiana Avenue, Kentucky, and that was the taller structure downtown. They were kind of they had to paint the building, uh, they had to put some landscaping in, probably about a 12 foot buffer area up against the building. You know, it that's was existing. Okay, so it was existing, yeah. So I mean. It's but hard to compare this new construction to existing. Okay, and why don't you just listen to your the I you still need to open up for the. Yes. Yep. So I'll let you do that. Thank you. And any neighbors who'd like to step up to the podium and please just state your name and your address. Hi, I'm Victoria Almgren. I live at ten twelve Alabama Avenue. So I'm on the other side of the alley from this, and I want you guys. To succeed, it's going to be better than the trucking company. But don't forget, you know, we're still there. Yeah, it's the back of our yard. But if you were as close to the alley as your yellow building is, and it's the entire alley, it's going to, I'm going to be claustrophobic. It just makes me nervous looking at it right now. It's just kind of like walls. I mean, with the trucking company, the building is back a little bit. There's a little hill with the tree, and it's like it's going to be wall and 
nothing. So if there's any way, I know what you're proposing for the Kentucky side is good. Yeah, there's going to be curb and there's going to be good stuff on that side. You know, there's a little bit of grass on 10th Street, but then it's like the alley is just junk. So don't, don't forget about us. I might be the only one on that side of the alley that cares, but <laughs> I do care. This is so. the changed design. Okay. This is, this is the new alley design where we're going to break that up with the different uh, panels. Okay. So it's not so much of a the building expansion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not so, be but I mean, you know, <laughs> and, and is there going to be any kind of drainage on the alley side or is our alley just going to be a river? Because like now when it rains, the yellow building, it's like, you know, okay, poof, and that comes down and then it like gets to the gravel and kind of soaks over. So if there's no gravel there, is it just going to be, you know, the well, well, alley river? <laughs> well, it'll run through the street and into the drainage. But no, but she's talking about the stuff on, on the alley side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll run down the alley to the street. And then yeah. Actually, the same way. It Where it around. makes a lake already, and so now the lake will expand. So oh. I just don't, I know people don't tend to care about alleys, but, you know, it's like I'm right on the other side of it. And, you know, just it seems like a whole a whole lot of hard stuff, and you know, and no consideration of the alley. So, kind of think about that. I don't know if there's any other. I'm not a construction person, so I don't know like drainage wise if there's anything. You know, are we going to end up we on the west end of the alley where the yellow building is tends to be pretty thick ice. <coughs> So I try to avoid that side and come in on 10th Street. Well, now if it's going to all be like that. <coughs> well, the ice won't be an issue. The reason the ice is on the other end is because Ross Club blocks the sun in the winter. And the ice builds up there. So on the other side, on, on this end of the alley, we would not have an issue with the ice build up because the sun would actually hit that side. Um, Ross Club is the reason why we have that big pile of ice um, on the other side. And I do snowball that. Anyway, I hope you guys can work something out. I think, you know, maybe not quite there yet, but good luck. Thank you very much. Is anyone else? Yeah. I guess. Just your name and your address. Sure. Uh, Leon Jump. I own a property at 1020 Alabama. Thank you. Uh, my, my question is whether or not there's going to be access to this from the alley. No. No, no, no access from no, this no to the alley. Yeah. Okay. All right. Traffic in the alley it should be dramatically reduced. Yeah. Right. But there's no, no automobile traffic going in and out of this facility no. from the alley. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. All the traffic will be from the driveway. Right. Right. Thank you, Mr. Jump. Anyone else? Okay, Commissioners, uh, Marilyn. Thank you. You're, it's a giant ask that you're requesting. This, to the north, you want it seven feet when the requirement is 25. To the east, you request you want four feet when the requirement is 25. To the south, you're asking for three feet when the requirement is 25. And on the west, you're requesting zero when the requirement is five feet. Those are giant asks. We need to reach some sort of other agreement, I think. Anything else, Marilyn? That's all, thank you. Okay. I was gonna make a motion. Ryan? No, I was gonna make a motion, so. Please go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make a motion to hold this because I think there's several items we need to uh, work out. I'd recommend the designer, developer, set up a meeting with city staff to iron out the landscaping plan, a very detailed landscaping plan, uh, detailed stormwater plan, and also, we're going to have to decrease these variances. This, this four feet and seven feet and three and a half isn't going to cut it. So um, finalize your design and set up a meeting with city staff and hopefully talk about it in two weeks. OK, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of holding this document, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, um, 
The next item on the agenda is item 3.6. RO number 165 of 1920 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting the final downtown district's activation and placemaking plan for the downtown, uptown, Indiana Avenue, and Michigan Avenue districts. You want to do that from here or over there? Okay. <clears throat> So thank you. This plan is attached in your um, in your document, and hopefully some of you have had a chance to look at this. But this is a uh, new plan that's basically kind of going off of the successes of the Harbor Center Master Plan that were that was approved uh, in partnership with the Downtown Business Improvement District in the days that um, Mr. Huffman was the bid manager. Um, so that plan, when we looked at the plan, about 90% of the items in the plan were completed. Um, so the idea of moving forward and looking at additional activation in these corridors identified in downtown, uptown, Indiana, and Michigan uh, came to fruition. So this is really building on the placemaking that you see, the public art that's happened, um, and then studying these areas and giving us some direction on what um, these corridors could look like, the economics of the corridors, what some of the imp improvements could be, um, and, and basically expanding on what we've done to date. So I'm not going to go through the plan. Um, the plan is in your packets um, attached to the application, but we're looking for approval uh, recommendation back to mm -hmm. the council mm -hmm. to accept the plan, and it'll allow us to then uh, allocate probably block grant uh, funds to it and other granting sources um, that come up over the course of the next five years. Thank you very much, Chad. Anybody have any discussion or questions on this? Uh, Alderperson Bourne? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chad, I did have the opportunity to review this quite thoroughly, and I think it's a, it's a very good plan, so I'm going to support it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, David? I, I, I concur with Jim. Uh, very well done. It really expands what, what we got started back in the day. And uh, it just really struck me because I happened to be on Facebook uh, earlier today, and you constantly see people uh, in the Black Pig Alley, I'll call it, uh, taking pictures there. It, it's just a cool space, and everything else that has happened has really revitalized the downtown. So great job. Thanks, Chad. Would you like to make a motion, Mr. Hoffman? Uh, move to approve. Second. Thank you for that uh, motion to approve and recommend uh, acceptance by the city council. That motion's on the floor. Any other discussion? Marilyn? Downtown looks wonderful. You've done a great job. And remember, the naysayers do talk a lot. <laughs> and the people who love it are just happy. <laughs> Thank you for the, that comment. So true. Okay, with no other comments, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. And um, our next meeting is scheduled for March 24th. Uh, with that, I'd accept a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you.